<laughs> Hello, guys. Hey, everyone. Hi. I'm Rory. And I'm Ronnie. And welcome to Sinful Quinful Sunday. <laughs> the show where we do what, Ronnie? It's the show where Rory gets me drunk, <laughs> takes advantage of my drunkenness, and we talk about books. More specifically, we're talking about the Julia Quiniverse. Yes, and this time we're doing Bridgerton, book four. Book four. The <laughs> Romancing book four. Mr. Bridgerton. Oh, yeah. While we play a game called Bridger Go. Bridger Go. Where we... <laughs> <laughs> where we mark off all the tropes that julia uses and try to get bingo and if you want to find a copy of this you can always look on our website www.stopthecolorellow.com because julia hates yellow julia hates yellow and she that is color it. c-o-l-o-r not c-o-l-o-u-r that would have been more on brand but julia is not actually english so we stuck to her <laughs> roots ma'am yeah come on guys. excuse me mm-hmm. we are the real ones here and of course because we're drinking what are yeah. we drinking today ronnie i don't know you just gave me liquor <laughs> she's trying to corrupt me man i can just taste the strongness of it i'm two drinks in we pre-gamed <laughs> Yes, we did. And she just handed me something that smells like regret. <laughs> yeah, usually Ronnie makes the drinks. Today I got to be the bartender. I made this drink my dad invented, but I kind of like had to work with the ingredients. It's so we had. good. It tastes like an orange creamsicle. It does taste like a creamsicle. It's so good. But what he does is he does gin, Quanta e Trace, which is like this vanilla liquor. Oh, and he good. does seltzer, like or- blood orange seltzer. But because we didn't have gin or blood orange seltzer. I had gin. My personal stock in I, my room. Oh, you did? You didn't tell me that. I didn't know that. I just it's had okay. vodka. I so. keep it for nights when I really hate being here. <laughs> okay. I don't blame you. I hate it here, I'm too. living in her spare room right now, which is negative 20 degrees. So yes. You need the gin to keep you warm. Oh, yes. Alcohol warms the soul. Yeah, totally. But even though I don't know what we're drinking or how much, I can still do this. If you are over the age of 21, <laughs> including the age of 21 in the United States, or if you are of legal drinking age elsewhere in the world, please... Please, I beg of you, feel free to join us because we think we're funnier when we're drunk. And I think you'll think that we are funnier when you're we're drunk. Help our careers by drinking. Please do. But again, um, <laughs> as I've said before, this is a one-way auditory medium, so I really have no way of noting if you're actually 21 or legal in your state or province or country, etc. So, uh, yeah, yeah, just be, be legal. <laughs> but today, Wink. today I altered, <laughs> I altered the drink. Wonk. And it's vodka instead of gin, and I put orange oh, juice. I was too early on my spiel. And plain seltzer. I was too early. <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> Cut the previous, paste it here. It's done. For shizzle. Drink if you're legal or not. And feel free to join us because today it's actually fancy. It's in like a fancy glass. Mm-hmm. We actually are being like thematically appropriate today. I'm already drunk, so I'm being very careful to set this down with purpose. Because <laughs> in a nice glass, there's a larger center of gravity. Mm hmm. We would call that the leverage arm. Yes. But last time we talked about uh, the third book in the Bridgerton series, which was An Offer from a Gentleman. An Offer from a Gentle Pussy. <laughs> As we like to call it the Offer from a Gentle Pussy. As it is known in my laptop. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh my God. Hi, Lou. <laughs> All right, Lou's gone. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> whoopsie that's what we call a blooper and that's what we call needing to lock the door we can't let anyone walk in on our lovers quarrels (laughs) Ooh, (laughs) sorry about that (laughs) but anyway where were we anyway we were talking about something julia quinn and the fourth book we love her yeah today i think it's ronnie's turn to recap it's my turn to recap but i am going to admit i've already had two very strong beverages yep and so i'm reading a recap offline so (laughs) credit to she did read it i swear (laughs) i did credit to save the cat blog Mm -hmm. yes you rock thank you i'll i'll i can I remember a lot of stuff from this book. I so. do too. I just need a general like, here we go, here we go, here like we go. what happens go. in what order? Because there's a lot of balls in in all these books and you just can't fucking remember what shit happens at what ball. As someone with two left feet, I am very offended by the number of balls I would have had to attend if I was <laughs> there's, an 18, 12, there's damsel so in distress. Many, there's so fucking many. There's so many balls. Anyway. 
just missed my tooth. All right, you ready to go? I just bit down on my own tooth. You bit your tooth? I know. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Okay. It's like when you miss bite. Yeah. Maybe it's a post braces okay. thing where you just forget where your teeth are in space and you bite them and you're like, ah. I guess. <laughs> I mean, the English have bad teeth, so you biting your teeth is, like, kind of appropriate for this Perfect review. segue. Yeah. Opening image. Oh, pages by the one way, through four. don't forget to put your thing down on your free space. Hot homme du jour. Hot is subjective. I'm not putting a tile there because I don't think that Colin is Colin, very hot in his heart. Okay, Colin is supposed to be, like, hot. He's sexy, but he's not hot. No, Colin is supposed to be hot. All the Bridgertons are hot. No, he's not. Just hot. because he's not hot in the show doesn't he's mean sexy. he's not hot in the book. He's hot he's, in the book. He's He doesn't make my heart burn. Well, that doesn't matter. He's described as hot. No, but that's what hot All is. All the Bridgertons makes you look feel the, the same. Feels. You make you feel the feels. Dude. Feel. <laughs> All feel. the Bridgertons fucking look the same. You know what they say? I don't want to conceal. I don't want to don't feel. <laughs> <laughs> conceal. You want to let it go? I want to let it go. I hate how Colin. I hate that joke. <laughs> that was so outdated. Fuck you. Okay, opening she image. Put an F down on the hot tile. I fuck just want him. you guys to know. Because fuck Colin. F- I hate Colin in this F book. F this hot home de jour. Calm. Spoiler alert. I fucking hate Colin in this it's book. It's not a spoiler alert. We've been leading up to this for the last I mean, four I've, episodes. Yeah, I've said it like a bunch of times. For all of you fucking Pollen stands from the show, I just want you all to know... Colin fucking sucks. I'm going to shit a chicken and then throw it at your face. Like, that's why all the book stands were fucking pissed that they skipped over Benedict. Because it wasn't Solomon just sucks because, a duck. Well, yeah, because it wasn't. Everybody thinks it's just because book readers are like, we want things to stick to the book, which fair, I think is a fair argument. But secondary to that, it's like, you know why a lot of book readers were pissed? No, tell me why. Because people liked Benedict in the book, which some people say Benedict gives them the icks, but I, I have a whole like spiel at the end of this about like period drama books and i'll get to it oh no later because i think it's actually i actually think it's important to mention that was hot (laughs) that was a hiccup i I actually think it's important to mention because a lot of the criticism of these books though some of them valid i think people don't understand not valid well some of them i don't understand i think people don't understand what book they're fucking reading and like i'm sorry that comes being degraded no, it's not <laughs> degraded. Put me in my place as lady of the house. I'll be lady of the sheets too. It's just like, guys, like you can't expect fucking woke feminism in a book that takes place in the Regency era. Like get over yourselves. You're still laughing at your own fucking joke, which is so sad. <laughs> but yeah, I'll get to it. I'll be a little bit more coherent when we get to like the end of this book. No, you won't. You'll be less coherent, hopefully. Maybe, probably. But yes. We'll see. I'll make a better I'll point. Because this is like mission. total side note. But like, I fucking hate Colin in the books. And I think people are blinded by like Colin from and Penelope from the show because they love Nicola Coughlin. And they mm-hmm. want her version of Penelope to be happy. But I, I just fucking can't stand them in the books. And I can't stand them in the show. So... I don't really like this book Mikhail that much. Coughlin looks amazing in the preview, so. She does. She looks amazing. I love Nicola Coughlin. Like, no hate to Nicola Coughlin. Love her. She's amazing in Dairy Girls. She's beautiful and wonderful, and I have nothing bad to say about her as an actress. Except I hate her character. Except the fact that she's forced to kiss the guy who plays Colin. Not, all, not because the guy who plays Colin is gross, but because he's playing Colin. <laughs> I you think both I mean? their characters in the show suck, and I think they suck worse in the book. I feel like maybe the fact that they both suck so much, they'll suck less together yeah maybe we'll see i don't fucking know but catch up bitch i hate him in the book so let's just preface that before we get started anyway you go ahead you need to drink more you need to catch up with me this is sad <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm getting there hold on she's peer you pressuring were talking me to your brother do you see what's happening she's peer pressuring drink, me drink 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 spitters or quitters let's give me go a second. give me a second you talk. You talk while oh I Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start on the prologue way, which, of course, starts with the female or opposing love interest, which yeah. in this case is Penelope. Because the female is always the main character. Like, even if the, the, the male is a Bridgerton brother, the female is always the main character. Yeah. That's the only feminism we got. Yeah. It's okay. always female centric. <laughs> <laughs> we think of the females, except for when we think about their duties. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what okay. sorry in the prologue this is t- set a few days before her 16th birthday back in 1812 mm-hmm. penelope is out and she is like in love great who's she in love with 
Colin. Fucking Colin. We love Colin. Fucking and Colin. so she comes up with this reason to like to dream and to dream for Colin about Colin and everything in love with Colin. Right? Mm-hmm. Um and yes. she's also out and then she accidentally causes him to fall off of his horse. Whoopsie. Not like that kills people or anything <laughs> back in the day. Not at all. <laughs> Bro, side note, there's so many Julia Quinn books where somebody died in a quote carriage accident. Like it's, it's so, so sad. funny how she And now she's that joking like about the fact accident. that she made her love fall off of a horse. Fuck you, Penelope. <laughs> As this you is, do. This is your first reason. Bro, you get to 13, like... I kill you. <laughs> Bro, people literally snap their necks falling off horses. They're like, this ain't funny. In IRL. Yeah, really. In the IRL. Have you ever heard of Christopher Reeve, how he like never acted again because... Not horses, but he, you like, know the girl who snapped play- his neck? The woman who played um, the mom in Parent Trap? Yeah. It's easy to snap your, snap your leck. Neck. Your leck. What's your leck? She fell off a horse? I didn't know that. No, she fell off a ski. Oh. Two skis, sorry. That's she had both sad. of them on her feet. But my point is that necks are very vulnerable and the fact that she's joking about this. And then what happens next is Colin's like, she's like, oh my God, Colin, I'm so sorry. He's like, oh, it's okay, bruh. <laughs> He's like, no big deal. Penelope, it's okay, bruh. It's okay. And she's like, oh my gosh, your good natured attitude has made me fall infinitely more in love. Ding. So then her hopeless crush turns into a hopeless pining. Oh, long time crush. Put it on the bingo board. Too bad, so sad. You will never be reciprocated because all he he wants is your body. Yeah, unfortunately. (laughs) Well, except he doesn't because he doesn't like her till she's not fat anymore. Uh, Yeah, that's kind of upsetting. Yeah. Get to that later. I'm really happy that the show seems to, like, be changing that. Where is it? A long time crush. You're right there. Oh, it's an I. Okay. (laughs) Pride. Oh, bridge. (laughs) Brig. Brig. Okay. And so she, like, falls hopelessly in love with him. Blah, blah, blah. Um, eventually, this isn't in my little synopsis thing, but I do remember, don't you remember? Yes. Where in I know where you're going a previous this. book, he the was, second one, he was j- j- jiving with his, <laughs> he was just rat rat tat with his brothers. He's like, no, I will never marry Penelope Featherington. And yes. he was around the corner, but penelope Penelope featherington Featherington. she's like i never asked you to marry me colin yeah i've said that i said this in the last one or or one of these already but i want to emphasize because i think it's fucking important i think that weirdly even though i hate colin more in the books than i do in the show this was the one big problem i had with the show's portrayals that this conversation happens in the show because it wasn't a dick measuring contest in the book right in the book it was like his brothers were harassing him they were like teasing him about like how Penelope. i call my brother my brother and he's like no i hate you <laughs> yeah kind of but they were like no, exactly like that they were harassing and they're like oh penelope <laughs> and then he just sort of snapped and was like guys stop i'm never going to marry penelope and he didn't know that she was standing behind him so it seemed like less of a dickish thing but in the show he's fucking talking to his bros he's like it's like literally a dick measuring her. contest right it was unprompted pretty much they're like Hey, what's going on? He's like, I'm never going to marry you. <laughs> Penelope, what a fucking fat troll. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Even worse, a ginger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those fucking gingers. Says a ginger. Right? No soul. I'm, I'm a ginger, so. <laughs> Are you? Cur- currently. <laughs> currently, at the moment. Uh, my hair has naturally got some ginger streaks in it. Okay. You want me to show you my streaks? No, it's okay. <laughs> sucks the die but like in the in the show what he fucking did was despicable and colin is way worse in the books i think he's much more of an asshole but that was disgusting like i i don't get how people still ship them because he's even such more a douchebag douche yeah like hit, that wasn't bag. a mistake like antony made mistakes like that was shitty as fuck yeah and it made Pen- and it's gonna make Penelope, in my opinion, look so fucking pathetic. Like she already looks really pathetic in the book, but she's gonna look even more pathetic if that they he don't publicly out- humiliated her and she's it- still okay with dating. If they him. don't outright acknowledge it, I'm gonna be like, mm. like we have an issue. She if needs they- to call him out on it, and then they- I might be okay. They need to call it out, but he needs to say that was not okay. Yeah, I agree. He can't say like, oh, I'm sorry. I just didn't realize you were there. Like, no, it's got to be like, that was not okay. I was saying that to cover up my deep, 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 (laughs) deep. Deeper than the Mariana Trench, bitch. As deep as I want to be in you in the mirror scene. Moving on. (laughs) Foreshadowing, Ronnie. Foreshadowing. Go, Ronnie. Bro, that was good. So now there's a setup. 
fast forward 12 years. So now we're in, do the math, guys. Come on. 18, 12 plus 12 equals 18, 24, 18, 24, 17, 38. Uh, <laughs> no, basically, this old bitch at the... <laughs> old bitch at the okay. ripe ancient age of 28 is considered a spinster her life is over i mean her eggs are she's shriveled. worthless essentially all she can do is sit there and knit and tell young girls that they look beautiful on the dance floor while everyone makes fun of her from the side yep. and her best friend Eloise Bridgerton is also unmarried and they're like besties together they're like haha we don't need no effing man <laughs> well, well, and right so, now, still, 12 years later, after falling madly in love with her brother, who doesn't say anything about the mad love? P -p -p Penelope. Wait, who, what? Penelope still hasn't admitted her feelings. Yeah. So MC has a secret. Put it down oh on the bingo board. She has a secret. Well, she had a secret from the beginning because guess what? Oh, we don't know this yet. We do know it, but we don't know it. Well, she has multiple secrets. Hold on. Hold on. I'm muting my mic. We haven't gotten to the same secret. <laughs> we've spoiled this so many times you don't know that the readers don't know that not yet I know so do we talk about it yeah I, I think we can talk no, about we it can. well she has a secret that she has a secret crush on Colin you can unmute your fucking mic <laughs> okay 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 sorry sorry I had to um pick a pepper from the garden <laughs> I don't know what that was. Okay. Keep going. Put so, it down the bigger board. She got a secret. All right. She's got a secret. And the only secret that she has in her little pantyhose is the fact that she is madlessly, hopelessly in love with her best friend's brother. Isn't there a Victoria Jessica song? My, My best, best friend's brother, brother is the one for me. Hey. B. <laughs> hey. Hello. Louise. Your best friend's brother. Colin. <laughs> Colin B. Woo! Colin -O B. Boo! I want a bone. Boom! Your boom, brother. Boom, boom. <laughs> I can't. I feel like Colin would get pegged. <laughs> <laughs> moving, I think so too. Moving on. Moving on. Let us know if you disagree, but mm. you shouldn't. <laughs> so they're kind of like, all oh, right, we're old, we're shriveled, mm. we're twenty-eight. We gotta add something to the bingo board. A virgin, because she's a virgin. She's a spinster. She's felt the love of a shower hose. She's a virgin, baby. Put it down <laughs> okay. the board. Fine. Gotta um, put it down the board. I'm putting down an S tile for um, slutty because it's ironic. Because <laughs> she's not. Okay. So then we like see who Penelope's mother, Portia, Portia. and the other Bridgerton people, the key members of society. We see Lady Danbury. Oh, Lady Danbury, put oh it down the big board. I'm putting down an O for, oh my fucking God, not this bitch again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Julia expresses her hatred for the color yellow. Because that is brought up, like, immediately. I'm putting that comes down, up a lot. You're going to have a lot of tiles on that one. I'm putting down an I for, I cannot, I can't believe Julia Quinn stole the name of our website, www.stopthecolorgellow.com. Boom, yep. boom. She hates yellow. Yep. Um, so then we're, we're meeting all these people. We're seeing them all together. And um, we're also, again, reintroduced to Lady Whistledown, who anonymously Whistledown. reports on the goings on the town and the squares. And no one. Paula. What? Uh, she oh she spares no one, including Penelope and Colin. Colin, Colin. fucking hell, Colin. <laughs> we're from, having a problem from right her now. criticism. So right. like we're reintroduced to all these revolving door characters, and now Colin, who is mind you five years older than her. <laughs> yep. Every the guys that should be a tile on the bingo board. I should when I make the next bingo board for like after we're done with Bridgerton, I just make like the Julia Quinn trope board. I need to add like the guy is older because he's always older. He's never the same age. For me, the real disbelief is that Violet and Edmund could have gone five years without having another children when really they've been going at it like rabbits since they met. Yeah. That's the biggest disbelief for me. Yeah. They, like, went five years without having three children. Like, they only had Daphne in that time. That's my real, like, whoa. Yeah. I don't know what that's about. I but know. I know, like, all of them are always older. Like, Antony's, like, ten years older than Kate in the books. 
He's like in his 30s and she's like 21. She's 12. She's not 12. I think she's, she's 21. No, she's 22. Sorry, sorry, sorry. She's turning 12 next month. She's turning 12. Yeah, sure. Because <laughs> in the it's show, like when, she's like 27 or something. In the book, she's literally 22 and he's like 32. It's like when Mila Kunis auditioned for that 70s show and she's like, I'm turning 18. Yeah. They never asked when. Never said when. <laughs> Honestly, it's like. Queen. And then so we see Colin again, right? Or we know about Colin, rather. We hear about Colin. And he is now 33 and a determined bachelor just returned from his late excursion abroad and must deal with his mom. Because he uses travel to make up for his lack of personality. And his lack of wanting to find a bride. Okay. That's he's not like, technically true because in the book he ha- he's like the funny one in the books, but he never says anything actually funny. So No. Julia just, struggles with show don't tell. He's more so like the there he's he's like he trips over something like oh colin yeah and he just eats all the time and that's supposed to be funny like, totally okay, cool Gl- colin. glutton's a sin obviously yeah. it's funny then oh my god it's funny he eats i eat oh my god i'm so hashtag relatable that's blah, 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 blah. so funny ah, i've never met <laughs> anyone who did that before okay and then um so he's like definitely like i don't want to get married i'm gonna be a bachelor i'm gonna travel the a world rake! Put it down on the bingo board. And I'm going to sow my wild oats in whatever version I can find. Oh, also we have to put MC is less hot than someone else. Because Penelope is less hot than me. Than literally everyone. Than, I think Julia Cudney. It said- says in the book, um, MC is less hot than literally everyone. Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, quote Ronnie. Just <laughs> Ronnie. Just you. Just yeah, you. Just me. They knew who you were in 1824. Where is it? I can't read. MC is less hot than someone else. There we go. I've literally had to help her find every fucking square on the bingo board at this point. I told you I'm drunk. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. So, Colin is no exception to the resisting of love. Theme started. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Dramatic reading. One might say that true love conquers all is the underlying theme for every genre romance. This fits here, of course, but there are also other threads hidden between the pages. Okay. Um, <laughs> you just stopped yourself. From sorry. I, like I said, I'm reading someone else's synopsis. So she has like a little insert. Yeah. So um, she mentions how Eloise says tenacity can be a very good thing at the proper time. Penelope's like, yeah, right. And the improper time is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> yeah, la, 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 la. Um, and there's another theme about identity and true identity that comes into play when Lady Danbury is like, she sparks the um like, well because we mentioned lady whistledown who we still don't know who it is fuck you don't say anything i wasn't gonna okay <laughs> lady danbury is like mentions briefly like unmasking lady whistledown oh yeah that's a big plot point in those in the book that- yeah i'm getting to it she yeah. sparks the unmasking storyline as a catalyst oh a ball where the plot advances it's not Put there it yet all right i'm putting it down anyway. i'm not there yet okay get to it no she took my square off. That was no. Mean. Fuck you. Okay, I'm sorry. I this isn't where she's talking about unmasking Lady Whistledown. I'm saying it starts the theme of unmasking because she says to Penelope, <clears throat> "Isn't it nice to know, to discover that we're not exactly what we thought we were?" Oh my goodness. It has profound resonance. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> now there's a debate. <clears throat> the debate, pages forty nine to one hundred. Colin and Penelope share familiarity and respect that has developed over a decade of friendly acquaintanceship. And remember, she had been writing to him while yep. he was overseas. Right. Consistently. Big difference from the show. In the show, they're friends. In the book, they're acquaintances. Like, they aren't that close. Yeah. They just know each other because Penelope's yeah. close with Eloise. And that's like, because in Regency era society, you wouldn't ever be that close to a man as Correct. a friend. That just wouldn't be a thing. But they're like acquaintances. Yeah. They yeah. know each other. He's like known her for years, but they aren't like friends, friends. Like they don't like fucking share secrets and shit. Yeah. It's not like. Not like us. <laughs> but it's not like the, you know, the my best friend. I'm in love with my best friend trope. Like they're not best friends in the books. They Mm-mm. She just knows him because it's her friend. She brother. makes friendly banter with him through letters. Right. That's basically. pretty much it. Like just to give. They don't find company. solace in each other. They find comfort. Right. And that's. Oh, that was poetic. I guess <laughs> no it was write that down get Put it that on, on a, a tattoo fucking pillow embroider that shit no embroider it on your body i want it on a tattoo uh so they continue to do their little banter thing and have found company in each other like i said comfort not solace 
And, and until now, it's been entirely platonic, at least from Colin's perspective, because the man's perspective is the only one that matters in Regency area <laughs> London. Yes. Uh, quoted by Julia Quinn. 100%. Um, they debate a concept called popularity. Rory, you don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You had to go expose me like that? Okay. Am I wrong? You're going to look at me and you're going to tell me that, that I'm wrong? wrong? She came, came down, down in a bubble, bro. <laughs> Grow up. Grow up. I fucking hate us. Keep going. <laughs> Can you tell that we've done that a lot? Um, so, yeah. They um, debate the concept of popularity, which Colin has always enjoyed. And Penelope as one of the ton's biggest notorious wallflowers, um, does not enjoy it. And She's like, lol, I've never seen popularity. I've never met one. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And it introduces this dichotomous relationship between, or rather dichotomous perspective and their relationship, where they have completely opposing perspectives to something that matters intrinsically in their lives. Because there's both a member of the ton, high ton, mind you. It's like, the ton, babe. Ton. What's a ton? It's a ton. No, it's a thousand pounds. <laughs> <laughs> they're a ton. They're they're the a ton. ton. They're, they're your ton. They're the ton. <laughs> Is that can't. not it? That's really funny. Is it's a ton? Are you telling me it's not the Bridger ton? It's Bridger. Are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> it's pronounced ton. No, it's French. It's pronounced ton. You fucker. <laughs> Make it up. It's a no, French word. I thought it was ton, as in Bridger ton. Are you being fucking serious right now? Yes. <laughs> I don't even know what to fucking say right now. It's not the ton. No, it's not the ton. It's ah. the ton. Fucking hell, I'm gonna shit a chicken. Oh my fucking god, that was funny. Oh my god. I thought the EPA was funny, but that's fucking amazing. Fuck you. That... Okay, continuing. Oh, keep going. They have different perspectives. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, you laugh. I do. Sorry. I I'm so rarely corrupt. <laughs> I need to go to the this. bathroom, I'll spit in your drink. Okay. <laughs> You've done worse. It's fine. I've licked you. Oh my god, stop. Please. We don't need to expose Where's ourselves. Where's the whipped cream? We don't need to expose ourselves. <gasps> You're admitting to it. No! <laughs> I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> okay. Segway. <laughs> we don't have a segue, so we're just going to keep going after that. Anyway, so like Penelope goes snooping in his little journal because she's a little snoop and she's a little sneaky sneak and a little snoopy Sneakity snoopy sneak. sneak. Put a pin in it. Doom, doom. Mark that character oh, analysis. Put dead parents because Colin's doom, dad doom. is dead. His dad is dead. <laughs> I don't think he's mentioned it though. It doesn't matter. His dad is dead. Dead parent. Put it down. He has a dead dad. <laughs> His dad is gone. He shuffled off this mortal coil. He is dead. He died picking flowers for his prager's wife. Yep, where is he it? dead? I don't think Penelope's dad is dead in the book. No, he's right? Not. He's not. They kill him off in the show. I don't think he's dead in the book. Uh, they don't just kill him. They brutally assassinate him. <laughs> yeah, they like fucking murder the shit out they of him. Mark he's gone. Him. Yeah. Anyway, she finds his travel journal. Put a pin in that character trait of hers. You know, snooping. His travel journal. Yeah. and Somebody she's... else described it as, like, his travel vlog. It seriously is the vlog. <laughs> it really would just be a travel vlog if it wasn't, if like, If he had a camera, he'd be one of those, like, Casey, uh, Casey, not Muskrat. What is it? A Casey dude. His name's Casey. He does uh, video vlogs. I don't, I don't fucking care. Anyway, um, she finds a little snippet, and she's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is good. I'm hanging on by every last thread. And then Colin's like, what are you doing looking at my travel vlog? I mean book. <laughs> and he is so He's mad. mad. His insecurities, they emerge. No one was meant to see his writing. But Penelope is only further intrigued. She's like, oh my gosh, you have flaws? But you, have wait, flaws. you skipped over Lady Danbury's thing at the ball. Like her proposition. She makes a proposition at the ball, at the beginning of the book. Do, 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 do. Okay, talk about it then. Fine, bitch. Uh, you missed it! <laughs> you are st- 
steamrolling my my go i'm sorry go she, she, what you telling me to say it say it okay so like <laughs> Lady Danbury, they're talking about Lady Whistledown at the ball, and Lady oh, Danbury... Oh, man, I did miss it. I got it. Yeah, go Pages ahead. 47 to 48. Lady Danbury offers a pricey sum of 1,000 pounds, which is a ton, <laughs> to the person. I like how she puts, which is a ton, quotes, <laughs> just so you know. No, 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 I wrote, I said that. Oh, you said that? I said that. It sounded like you were quoting whoever no, wrote a, this. No, 1,000 pounds is a ton. There we go. Full circle. I'm oh, right, my you're God. wrong. I'm right, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm mind blown she offers a ton <laughs> to the person who can mask lady whistledown and this c- creates a cascade of unexpected problems for everyone involved a pl- ball where the plot advances put that fucking tile this happens down. at a ball yeah. as rory would be so keen to let us know and not let's move on until she says her piece moving on as i do come on so anyway they have their little debate she actually really wants to see more but Khan's like no i'm sensitive you can't look at this this is my art this is my big this is my baby boy oh girl this is my, <laughs> my uh. boy look how you massacred my <laughs> boy <laughs> you're gonna look at my rat too you're gonna my rat my boy and um and so we are brought to the attention that she has always found that Colin Bridgerton to be a charmer. But she also now realizes that he's a traveling, budding writer. He's growing his big boy pants at the right old age of 33. Which, can I say, side I'm note. I'm orphan debt. <laughs> 33. <laughs> Best age, Julia. Best thing you ever did. You don't know what it's like to be orphaned at 33. But like, what I find so funny about this, and I'm sorry, Julia, because I really don't, I like, it is funny to roast you, but I feel almost bad saying this, but it, I have to point it out because I thought it, like, from the second I read this book the first time. It's so hilarious how Penelope is saying how well-written and wonderful this vlog of his is, or his his travel book is, and I'm like, bitch, you wrote this. <laughs> like, I think it's so funny. She's gives, Julia's just giving herself a little pat on the yeah, back. Oh my gosh, look at beautiful. Oh my gosh. She wrote this. Like, it's so funny how one of her characters <laughs> is talking about how amazingly written something another one of her characters and wrote, really, which she wrote. This is what Colin wrote. Trees are pretty. They flow in the wind. Whisper, whisper. You can paint with the colors of the wind. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, literally. literally. Oh, my God. It was so funny. I'm like, yeah, trees are green, guys. That's great. It was, it was fine. You can look it up if you want to. We're not going to recite it. It was pretty funny. I got to say, like, it wasn't horribly written. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it was, like, comically bad. It's just hilarious that the author is basically using another one of her characters to comment on how well written something she wrote is. Because Penelope knows that this is, like, incredibly, like, visually stimulating. You can imagine yourself in Greece and Cyprus. Yeah, which, and she's like. It was just okay. It was fine. It was fine. It was a book. Yeah, it was I read it. They were words on a page. Was it, oh my God, you should publish this and everyone will read it worthy? Probs not. No. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't quit your day job. Yeah. Not yet. Until you've romanced a few... Bridgertons. Bridgertons. <laughs> Mr. Bridgerton. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Moving on. So, she has always thought that he was a charmer, and so is uh, Lady Whistledown, and she's obviously such an insightful person, and so poor Penelope realizes that she really knows nothing about her longtime love. She doesn't know anything about his hidden talents, his fears, his dissatisfaction with life, his temper, because he literally just blew up at her for creeping in his super secret diary that in modern day would have a, one of those super, super secret voice command to open followed by a four digit pin code password. You know what I'm talking Omnizor about. Omnizor has a secret. Put it on the bingo board. Did you have one of those? What? My secret life journal. I did actually. You had to say. <laughs> I did. And then I it op- bought it at the Scholastic Book Fair. <laughs> and then when you open it, it said, la, 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 la. Yeah. Yep. And like if, if you didn't remember your your voice combo, or if your voice changed even slightly, it didn't work. It wouldn't work, yeah. You and have I'm to be like, like la, la, la. I still never know what was inside of that when I had to throw away. Maybe it was like you never a got to open mouth. it. No, you didn't just rip it open. You could have just broken it and like opened it. You no, know, I could have. I hope nothing cool was in there. Anyway, <laughs> what if that was Side like, note. What if it was like the cure to like world hunger i don't think that seven-year-old you had the cure to world hunger oh, but i think i i could have okay yeah well, 
<clears throat> oh, it's gone now. Next part. So their argument causes a temporary rift, but with it, it also creates a fresh awareness between them. Not only must Penelope now see Colin anew, but she is, but he's forced to rethink his opinion on her, namely the fact that he values their friendship significantly more than he thought, which kind of makes him say, oh, fuck. Oh, oh, we forgot a tile. England's oh, most I eligible about- bachelor. Oh, my gosh. You know what? What the fuck? We won Bridger Go. Done. <laughs> Come on, man. I was taking this game seriously, miss. I fucking won the last three times. Because I would have won already. You're just upset because you're losing. No, okay. I'm upset because I can't read without the word <laughs> swimming on the page because I'm drunk. And I need to well, think about- Well, just because you're having a bad day doesn't mean I'm having a bad day. Uh, yeah, fuck your chicken strips. I am fuck playing chicken- the fucking game and you can suck my dick. You're playing the game that you made up. Well, it's not like I- Fuck you. Fuck you, man. <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! That's from Holy Musical Batman. If you know that, you're a queen. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I have my board, and I'm taking it seriously. Well, according to my board, I already won. (laughs) (laughs) No, you fucking didn't. I just played Kumbaya on this freaking board. Anyway. Um... So basically, he's like, oh, shit, what's this new dynamic? I'm feeling feelings in my nether regions. Oh, my gosh. I don't think of her as just my friend because I want her to be my friend, but I also want to fuck her. Um, that's the thing that happens a lot in Julie Quinn's books where, like, all of a sudden, the fuck out of nowhere, like, with a male character boner. will be like, I'm horny. I want to fuck this person. <laughs> it's so random. Verbatim. Um, my cock is hard. <laughs> yeah, he's like. Ooh, she only knew. Like, that's, like, their favorite line she, like, like, sees. He, shifts uncomfortably in his chair or adjusts his trousers. Yeah, it's like, who? So he emphatically now, realizing this, has no interest in marriage. Yet, he's back in England for a mere fortnight. And this woman, who is always the fuzz- at the fuzzy periphery of his life, has suddenly come to sharp focus. And now, her views and feelings of him matter. Which... Dude, you are whipped already. Yeah. If that no, you're you oh. might as well be a cattle horse. <laughs> Cause you are whipped like some butter. Whipped, my boy. This thoroughbred is You are whipped, whipped like cream in your own jeans. Whipped like whipped queen cream queen cream. <clears throat> oh, but that's a big insecurity for Colin though. Like with just as a side note, like he's so fucking petty. Like his whole thing is like Anthony's a Viscount, and Benedict's an artist, and I don't do anything. Yeah, because and you Penelope's don't. Because there to be, like, his hype man, like, you're a wonderful writer. And he's like, don't look at my writing. And he's like, don't look at it. And she's like, what, I'm telling you one thing that you're good at, because that's literally the only character trait you have going through. You're not funny. You eat a shit ton. You eat as much as Ron does in the movies. Like, you suck. Yeah, he's like Ron from a very Potter musical. Like, he just is always eating You never tell a girl you like her. It always makes you look dumb. <laughs> but it's like, it reminds me of, like, iCarly with, like, Wade Collins, where he's like, don't look at it. <laughs> like, that's what I think. <laughs> that's what I think of. Yeah, um, so moving on a bit, we have, um, <clears throat> so their friendship between pages 101 and 120 transitions into an unexpected love story as Penelope is curious about these newfound facets of Colin, oh, namely oh, oh. the facets between his legs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and he finds that he's attracted to her in both an undeniable and unsettling way. What's the unsettling way, man? Describe it in explicit detail, please. Which- Please emphasize. He all of a sudden thinks that she's fucking hot because she's not fat anymore. That mother, mother motherfucker. You motherfucker. You motherfucker. That's my John Mulaney impression. Just you (laughs) motherfucker. You motherfucker. I think somebody, I think Julia Cudney said in her whole Bridgerton review, which her review is awesome because she goes through like all the books and talks about Bridgerton pretty thoroughly. But what she said was, that she was disappointed because it should have been that Colin noticed her because of her confidence. Like that after 10 years of being a spinster, she's yeah, like her all confidence of, a sudden of showing really off her confident. boobs and good figure. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. That's I mean, exactly what you mean. That all of a sudden he realizes you're that a part she's... of a problem. You're, you're supporting. You're a... part of the problem. You're supporting a corrupt system. system. You're part of the problem. A lot of this podcast is us re- like just quoting stuff to each other that only we know about. Yeah, but like. If you know Twisted, also from Star Kid. Yeah, we're we just really like Star Kid. I'm you're sorry. not a queen. You're not a king. You are the mother 
fucking. <laughs> what? You are. Wait, wait, wait. What's his name? The vizier. The vizier. The royal vizier. You're not a king. You're not a queen. You're the royal vizier. Your moon shoes, man. You rock. But you like, rocked your socks off. But like she was saying that it should have been like that Penelope, like after 10 years of being a loser, like realizes that she's confident and comfortable with who she is. And like Colin starts to get that vibe. Like, oh my God, like is she actually hot because Rory, she's comfortable in her skin? No, it's just because she's thin Rory, now. Rory, you're forgetting something. Yep. We are in gregorian times yeah so the only thing that matters is if i can fit my waist into an apple and a half okay it's an orange and a half <laughs> if i was your age i could fit my waist into an orange and a half and so shall which yeah. is actually historically inaccurate you no. wouldn't have had a stay that went over your stomach like that in this time period i mean it's possible but they would never have laced that tight because the metal island wasn't invented yet also, it is anatomically very dangerous. Well, besides the point, it's just not a thing. No, it's not. Like, it just wasn't a thing. Like, oh. anyway, sorry, go ahead. But yeah, yeah you're fine. But so, yeah, I just want to say that I really wish that Colin's interest in her stemmed from, like, her confidence rather than, like, just that she's thin now. You know? A motherfucker on the board. <laughs> Colin's a dick. All right, keep going. MC is a dick. Yeah, that should be on here, honestly. Seriously. MC is kind of, not MC, but Om du jour is kind of sexist, should be a tile on this board, because all of them of are. kind of sexist, that's being very generous. All of them are, every single one of them. You read these books and somebody's a sexist in some capacity. Like I told you, a certain type of feminist reads these books. That's me. <laughs> I'm so glad you admitted your degradation kink. Um, honestly, I'm here to admit it. I'm a feminist and I love these books and I like acknowledge the trash that I am for doing so, but it's fine. At least you know that you're part of the problem. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so Colin and Penelope's early courtship is magnified by the unexpectedness of this experience for them both and intertwined by the secret of Lady Whistledown's identity. <sighs> Male versus female power, self-determination, and the need to have a sense of purpose. Wait, we didn't go over Lady Whistledown's identity yet, how he discovers no. that. No. Not yet. This but is it found just, out. It at says the end. in the thing. No, it's not in the end. It's right in the middle. Yeah, we're not at the middle yet. But it just said in the synopsis, Lady Whistledown's I forget it. Keep going. No, they're trying to figure out who the, the oh. everyone's the, the the ton is trying to figure out who she is. Right. And so doesn't Colin like, think it's Eloise? At one point he does, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, keep going. And then he's like doesn't he ask her and she's like, you fucker. Yeah, she's like, No you stupid <laughs> ass. What? when would i have had the time to do anything in this bustling house when none of you maggots leave me alone it's like mark Wahlberg in the happening what no <laughs> and so um their growing flirtation and attraction continue there's a horrible musical performance at a ball that they both attend oh my god the smythe smith U- musical oh yeah for those of you who don't know Julia Quinn wrote She's a spin-off. She's so excited. Series. It's kind of making me feel sick. Uh, fuck you. Okay. Julia Quinn wrote a spin-off series <gasps> called The Smythe Smith Quartet, Quartet, which is about the Smythe Smith musical girls. And there's four of them. There's a thing that's like this running joke in the Bridgerton universe that the Smythe Smith family has an annual musical with all they the do. single females and they're notoriously terrible. They suck. And like the Smythe Smith Quartet series is about like four of the girls who played in the Smythe Smith musical. And I love those books. Okay. How is that relevant? It's not. And I just wanted to fucking share. They talk, they dance, but most of all, they kiss a very surprising kiss, which is at Penelope's request. And it rocks Colin. All right. He goes, this is the same conversation. He goes to her and he says, I think that Eloise is Lady Whistledown. That's where this happens. She's like, kiss me, Colin. And then his man brain is like, (sighs) okay. (laughs) What we're talking about. It's really sad. Honestly, this scene made me feel so fucking sad for her. Like, Penelope, it just reinforced Penelope how pathetic she is. She is. It's really sad. Like, and I don't mean that in a degrading sort of way. I mean, in a, it made me really sad kind of way. Because <laughs> she's, like, so sad and desperate. She's like, Colin, I've I've never been kissed and I'm almost 30. <laughs> and yeah. she's so sad. Like, and it's then, really fucking sad. And then it gets to the point where she's like, oh, um, he only kissed her because of pity it's yeah that's correct yeah it's really sad yep 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 but he thinks uh, but this is important for the next book but he think really thinks eloise is lady whistledown because she's always writing and she always has ink stains on her hands and Elo- and penelope's like 
Chloe's is not fucking Lady Whistledown. And he's like convinced. Like he's like, I know my sister. I know that she's Lady Whistledown. Okay, and then to add to both of their anxieties, um, Lady Whistledown's interest in being sought out is still increasing. No one said anything yet. And they're looking for revelations. This is worrisome because, yeah, it finally says in this little synopsis, he thinks that Eloise might be this mystery woman, and that would be a disaster. And he thinks that they could be cast out of polite society. And remember, we talked about earlier the dichotomy where he cares about what other people think and, and like, you know, Penelope, Penelope doesn't. Except she kind of does, but whatever. But, like, semi-full circle? <clears throat> except she kind of does. Again, Julia show don't tell she's so bad at this yep she sucks like she says this but penelope does care what people think of her she sucks as much as she hates the color yellow which is a lot (laughs) and so he's really worried about eloise's safety and security because lady whistledown has been kind of like a low-key hard-key bitch to a lot of people and he's like um yeah that's a scandal that well-born women will not be able to overcome yeah but, but side note though because this is important too if you've seen mm-hmm. the, only seen the show like the difference between lady whistledown and the books and the show is a huge difference yeah like, lady whistledown in the show is is ruthless um she's, she's con- fucked up to the max really bad like lady whistledown in the book would never do what lady whistledown in the show did and i go to my my yeah. early grave saying that well the thing is though that the show kind of the show does take place in like an alternate universe regency era london and because it's like a very sexy show with like a modern spin they make you believe that people got away with a lot more modern actions in those days than they actually did like saying something out of turn or having an affair was like a literally right life ruining thing yeah like you really couldn't escape that your people everybody you know would disown you they would never speak to you again you'd be cast out of society and it's not like ooh, i'm an emo alternative like <laughs> i'm out of society like, not no like, you oh, literally like people wouldn't sell oh, you a house oh that bridgerton girl no like, no people wouldn't sell you a house you'd never be able to have credibility again like it's not a small thing lose your job and the books even though they indulge in the whole like it's a sexy bodice ripper thing they are a little bit better about actually adhering to like the rules and societal expectations of regency england so like lady whistledown in the books is a lot more like she'd be in serious trouble with society for speaking negatively about somebody who has a title yeah like that's what's life ruining for her not that she's like literally ruining her best friend's reputation and saying she had like an affair with a nobody printer if that actually happened in Regency London, like not Eloise just, would never be able to show her face in society. Not just again. Eloise, but her whole family. Her whole family. They'd be cast out, they'd, they'd lose everything. Because she was a young and impressionable girl, they would attribute her actions as like improper raising and right. rearing. She'd have to like basically be forced into exile and probably would end up, if she was lucky, like working as a governess one day after years of going somewhere else that wasn't England. Which is fucked up. like she'd be cast off so just so you all fucking understand lady whistledown is not the same as she is in the show it's just no, not she's mm, less bitchy mm-hmm. she's just like a gossip she just is like ooh, this person wore this shitty thing to this ball Ooh, this person is like supposedly not in love with their husband this one ooh, looks fat yeah this person's fat like it's really like petty and stupid like for some in the show but it's, it's like, still like not great by high society standards but it's not nearly as bad as making up lies yeah, about like, insinuating right like premarital relations sex is what they mean yeah like if for the sh- for the time period it's life ruining stuff to say out loud but for between that and the show it's really not even the same like no. in terms of the gravity of what they're saying yeah anyway sorry to have no to, you're like, fine i just thought that was important to mention but off of that book penelope is still really worried about the safety of her friend her mm-hmm. bestie boo her mm-hmm. absolute best friend ride or die till the end and so Who she never ruins that was fucked in the show anyway who never ruins lady whistledown don't know her never ruins eloise's reputation that never happens yeah lady whistledown keeps her clean and then so they're all worried and then something amazing happens uh lady whistledown announces her retirement oh yes oh my god a scandal put it on the roof was it a scandal when she announces her retirement it's a scandal no it's not yeah it is everybody's talking about it for like weeks like oh my god God. a scandal that's a a scandal scandal is no a scan that's gossip a scandal is something that is intrinsically bad 
has mm. negative repercussions on I'm a person. I'm keeping it. I think it counts. A scandal is ruining reputations. Remove that right now, or I will remove it into my ass. I don't think that's what ass. a scandal means. I think a scandal a scan- means... Look. Alexa. <laughs> what is a scandal? As a noun, scandal can have a few meanings. One, a disgraceful or discreditable action. Boom. Circumstance, etc. Two, an offense caused by a fault or misdeed. Boom. Three, Damage to reputation, public disgrace. Four. There's no disgrace to lay you whistle down. Malicious gossip. Malicious. There's malicious no malicious gossip. There's Every- no maliciousness happening yes, here. Yes, there is because everyone's mad at Lady Whistle Down after she retires. No. It fucking counts. No, it doesn't. I am removing this into your asshole. <laughs> I didn't even get bingo from it. I don't know why you're so fucking offended. You're not even playing anymore. Alexa, thank you for your service. You're so welcome. Your at least some. Really gives me a charge. <laughs> fucking suck up. Keep going. <laughs> someone appreciates my presence here. Might be a robot, but still someone. So, yeah, re- speculations about the gossip writer persist, but they won't linger because there's no longer a reason to be concerned about anyone's reputation. Be- if anything, it's an anti-scandal because now one needs to wor- no, no one needs to worry about be- being belittled. So, a-, a double fuck you. Um, <laughs> so now... Colin and Penelope are able to kind of like breathe these about Eloise's reputation. And with no point of conflict going on, you know, like that underlying plot, blah, 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 Colin and Penelope can now relax and get back to where they left off after that kiss, right? Yep. Totally. Yep. There's going to be no problems at all. And with that optimism, I'm going to ask Rory to get up and make me another drink to corrupt <laughs> me further. Yeah, I guess we need to take a break. We now, need to don't take we? a break because this is actually entitled The Midpoint, so. Oh, that's a good place to stop. It is quite a great place to start. So, again, a scandal is disgraceful. This is just gossip. Fuck you. <laughs> Hi, it's Ronnie. It's me. Hi. And I just wanted to let you know our sponsor today. Our sponsor today is the fucking Merriam Webster Dictionary. So, <laughs> have you ever just, you know, been talking with an English major and thought, hmm, I don't think they know what they're talking about. Namely, a definition of a word. So have I. Quite frequently. So get your loved one, or hated one in my case, a dictionary. So that way when you best them, you can point at it and tell them that they're wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, gentlemen, don't you know what my favorite part about living in 1824 is? No, tell me, brother, what is your favorite part about living in this lovely time? (laughs) Well, you see, my favorite part is that we're so shallow. We're expected to be shallow. There's literally nothing, nothing that expects us or requires us in high society to be nice to anyone. I mean, just look at that fat navel in the orange and yellow. Oh, she's disgusting. Oh yes, I think that's young Penelope Featherington. Oh, well, you know, in a few years, you know, maybe 12 years, <laughs> she might turn beautiful. And then you know what? It doesn't matter what we're saying now because we're all shallow pricks, aren't we? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Mr. Bridgerton, he's been friends with her for so many years. I mean, he's probably going to end up with her. Oh, no, you just, you just, he would never. They hate each other. He even told us that he'd never get together with her. Oh, but I know Albert Forthington. But, you know, that's just how it goes. How what goes? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you know. How it goes in those shamed Hallmark movies, brought to you by the Hallmark Channel, where every romance story is pretty much predictable to a T, but we still get teary-eyed every time. Here at Sinful Quinful Sunday, you know we hate the color yellow, but you know who else hates the color yellow? Our sponsor for today, which is www.stopthecolorellow.com. So you can log on and you can find out more about us and our friendship, our mutual hatred of each other, our secret rivalries. And yeah, just really what we do here. We don't want to know what we do. So we perform these mostly drunk. Um, We probably won't know what we're talking about tomorrow. Probably won't remember the sponsor, but it's okay. So go to www.stopthecolorellow.com to find out more about us. And hopefully you can find more 
including lists of apologies for things we might have said. So, yeah. Hope to find you on that website. What do you get in the 1800s? Bitchy brothers, bitchy brothers. What do you get in the 1800s? Bitchy brothers who make fun of your friends and call them fat and say they'll never ever date them till the day they die. It's bitchy brothers, bitchy brothers, bitchy brothers, bitchy brothers. You know that's why we live in the 1800s. Bitchy brothers, bitchy brothers who are wrecks to all women yet have four sisters and don't even care what happens to women. It's the 1800s, 1800s, it's the 1800s, 1800s, it's the 1800s. What's so great about here? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's so much. I'm so glad you enjoyed that. It was off the cuff. Too. 1800. 1800. And that we're was, back. That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was one recording line. I was like, oh my gosh, how many parts can I sing at one time? You're just seeing how far you could take that before you ran out of lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, all right. Bitchy brothers who make fun of your friends and call them fat and tell them never ever take them to the day they die. It's the 1800s. <laughs> I'm so proud of you for that one. That was really good. Oh my gosh. Um, this is what, oh. I loved that. It makes me wonder what kind of creative things I could do if I actually applied myself. <laughs> Who knows? Oh. Bro, that was funny. Imagine if you decided to write reels. <laughs> I mean, you heard my tobacco song. Honestly, you'd probably be like, um, fucking, they might be giants. Like, you just write random weirdo songs uh, about weirdo shit. I've written, like, two songs in the past I'm four gonna, podcasts. My, like, fan theory is that, like, Ron, my conspiracy theory is Ronnie really wrote Istanbul as Constantinople. <laughs> I did. All right. So we are back, though. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm very drunk. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> We got a refill, and we it's did. equally as delicious this time around. It's equally as delicious, equally as non-nutritious, and equally as alcoholic. So let's see how this goes. And we also have an audience member. Hi, Lou. Yeah, my brother's just sort of sitting in the background. <laughs> I wrote the bitchy brothers about you. <laughs> He's not saying it. <laughs> he, he doesn't care. To speak. Okay, so bad guys close in. This is entitled page 153 to 261. So this is where it really gets up. So the whole ton, not ton. ton. No, it's ton. ton. It's ton. One, two, three. Ton. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's a thousand point. pounds. Leave me alone. Anyway, <clears throat> which is apparently how much everyone thought Penelope weighed in the first few oh, months. Oh, <laughs> No. No. Lou found that one funny. <laughs> Lou liked that one. I'm so sorry, but they really treated it like that yeah. was the thing. It was kind no, of that disgusting. was the joke Julia Cundy made, where she's like looking at the fan art of Penelope, and she's like, "You're telling me this is the ugliest woman to ever be ugly? <laughs> like, what are you In talking about?" In that case, about? I look like a foot. And then they cast Nicola Coughlin as Ugh. like the fucking. Like, role in the show and even though she's like a heavier set gal she's like absolutely gorgeous drop dead i don't give a flying fuck she that she's me. not like the hollywood standard of thin she's beautiful nicola yeah. coughlin so fuck you guys <laughs> fuck you fuck bridgerton <laughs> come but on yeah so um essentially they're at a ball where the plot advances so if you're still playing put, put another a, fucking tile down put a tile down there but if you've already won like me um <laughs> you didn't win you didn't even play this time <laughs> i think forfeiting before the game is over is equally as rewarding as winning i don't think flipping the board over fucking counts ronnie as winning <laughs> i think it counts if you make it count um anyway okay. so they're at this ball and penelope is there and so are a bunch of other bitches. And one of those bitches, namely, is this fucktard Cressida. Yep. Cressida, we hate her. Penelope? She's, she's Penelope's Regina George. Her. 
Yep. Like literally, literally the worst bitch to watch the face walk the face of the well, right earth. now. Isn't she Cressida Cooper because she got married? I don't fucking care. No, she's Twombly. Oh, Cressida Twombly. She got married twice. Twombly. Right? I thought it was Twombly. Twombly. They pronounce it Twombly in the audiobook. Twombly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. You're going to argue She's at this Tom. ball and she's like, I'm going to stir the pot. And you know what she says? She says, she's Lady Whistledown. <gasps> Colin is surprised, but he's also relieved. She's like, oh, good. It's not Eloise. Penelope is like in disbelief. She's like, um, this is bullshit. And Lady Danbury's is like, um, this is bullshit. Do not hand me coos- sh- shit and call it couscous, Jafar. <laughs> it's essentially what Lady Danbury, yeah. Danbury said. She's not having She's it. like, I don't believe this. Another tile Prove for Lady to me Danbury. that Cressida is actually Lady Whistledown um, and that you actually unmasked her. And so, <clears throat> and Colin originally went to this whole ball to apologize to Penelope for his inability to express himself clearly, um, which is just his, you know, dilemma of being a man. So, Sorry, I'm a dude. Well, sorry, I'm a rake dude. Love that. Yeah, we love that. We love him being a dude and making mistakes and not being able to admit to them until it need be. But <sighs> he's unable to do that because Cressida really cock blocked the whole event <laughs> by lying, the whole lying event. out her asshole. So um, she's just trying to get the money because she's like, who scandal? Like, broke. this is the proper instance for the term scandal. Yeah, I'm Rory. A scandal just so you know, down. if you were to put in the Miriam Webster dictionary, which is our sponsor, okay, go a fuck picture yourself. of scandal, it would be Cressida Ka- Crowper, Tombly, Cressida Cooper, T- Tombly, whatever fuck her name is now. That gold digger motherfucker bitch. Yeah, she's out of money now, so she's just doing yeah. this to get money if they get Lady Danbury's reward. Yeah, because okay, so she's anyway, a broke bitch. In a real bad beach in a real boom. Anyway, which okay. I love that we're supposed to hate that, but this is a time period where women can't earn their own living. So kind of like girl I'm boss, girl slay, but also you lie. Yeah, I mean honestly though, get that wage. Like who am I to judge? Mm, I feel like I would end up. What being else is she supposed to do? A lady of the night. <laughs> you get that syphilis, Ronnie. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> You think this is hard. I'm living with hepatitis. That's hard. <laughs> All right. That's from, sorry, Glee. Um, so he's unable to catch Penelope, but he does see her leave. And so what he does is he, being a little sneaky snake that he is, he follows her. And she doesn't go home. Nay, she goes in a carriage and she keeps traveling. He's like, a carriage. <laughs> carriage, carriage, carriage. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Ooh. Little. So <laughs> she's sneaking away in a hired carriage. And so he just follows her and he's like, she's a woman. She's got tender, soft, supple flesh. What could she possibly be doing in what a carriage she... on her own? In a carriage, carriage. Um. <laughs> By herself. Oh my goodness. So he follows her because he's trying to be her savior even though she don't need no man enough with this white knighting bullshit i know right in all these books man this and white knighting shit's really so getting, they go to the heart of the city me. which is where the poors live the poors and <laughs> like sophie the little rat girl <laughs> and this man he's like because he's like oh my gosh oh my dear flower penelope i keep dropping my tile fuck I'm you so sorry he's like oh my gosh my dear Penelope, I do not know her either. I know her not. And then he sees her get out of the carriage. And what does she do? And it right? drops her off in front of a church. A church, you say? And Colin, being the little snicky snick motherfucker sly eel, he sees her handing an envelope to one of the pew pockets. He confronts her. He snatches. Okay, so put a towel down for lying because we know that's coming. We haven't even got to the lie yet, well, though. I'm putting it down Before anyway. he's being a presumptuous bitch. Oh my god, this scene drove me fucking insane in the book. You explain, and then I will rant. So I will tell you what happened. He gets so mad because she's a woman. You can't hand people envelopes of nefarious contents. <laughs> Duh. There could be something explicit. In Women that. don't have private business. So also, BT dubs like a bingo. Sorry, go ahead. I am going to 
smack you <laughs> upside the head. It's important. We finished the game hours ago. Um, I was still playing because I was taking it seriously. No, you weren't. Yes, I fucking you was. You put down a scandal when it shouldn't have been a scandal. It was okay, a um, we fucking disagree on the point of that, so... So you disagree with Alexa? Um, <laughs> she lit up. Sorry, Alexa, we're not talking to you. Sorry, I thought I heard my name. You no. did, we just don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> we're we not going back to that. Anyway, so he snatches the envelope and he reads it. And he looks up at her and he says, "Your lady whistle down." Law and order. Um, which dun, dun. this scene drove me f- fucking insane. And so he sees that, and she is now purposefully publishing this last minute final edition to say, "Tihi, it's not Cressida. Go fuck her. She's just trying to get money. Now I'm out for real. Peace." Bye bye, <laughs> and so that's really all that she wanted to do. Yeah, and so she has been doing this for eleven years. Eleven. Please let me explain why I hate this scene. Oh, I'll because... give you four measures. Okay. One. I two. fucking hate this scene because Colin is being such a dick. She's asking Three. him not to interfere. It's none of his four. goddamn business. I don't care that she's Lady Whistledown. He had no right to grab an envelope from her after stalking her to this private place and then demanding to read her shit but and invading is, her personal she's business. She's not entitled to property because she is property. She's a woman. <laughs> well, I don't know. Never neglect. What I'm saying, like, as a reader, I'm supposed to find that charming that he literally no. fucking followed her and then stole her property from her hands. It's not her property. It is her property. It's her father's she... envelope on her father's paper with the father's quill that the father okay. pur- well, purchased. Well, he's he was not doing her a father, gentleman's so... act. He's not her father, so we have no fucking. Excuse. No, he's a fucktard. That drove me insane. I was like, fuck off. This is none of your goddamn business. Like, I don't care if she was Lady Whistledown or not. Like, you do not, you do not have a right to read her shit. And she's like crying in this scene. Yeah. Like, she's crying. She's like, doesn't want him to know. She doesn't want him to see. And he she's fucking like, does it, it anyway. Can I give it back? That was so fucking shitty. And it's just, he's like, why are you doing this? And she's it's like, like none because. Of your fucking business. I don't have to answer to you. She's like, well, she tells them, but yeah. she's like, I don't want to do this anymore, but I also don't want everyone to think it's Cressida because I worked 11 years of my life to get to this point. And, and Colin is like floored by this. He like wants to destroy it with the fi- final column. He's being really but shitty about it. He actually. like. He's so shitty, this whole book. I it, hate him. He like is so thrown off because like deep inside that cold, twisted, assholic, dickish. <laughs> prickish heart he's like feeling things which is the worst time to feel things when you're like in a like an anger match between two people Mm -hmm. so like he's feeling these things and he's like oh my gosh is this love and um (laughs) and so eventually uh, they leave in the carriage and the letter is never delivered to the pupil no it is it's delivered Oh, no, no, not at this moment. But she she says she won't and she does it anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'm not there yet. Sorry, though. I forgot about that. And um, without the letter being left for the publisher as planned. And it's just, he's he, mad that she that she put her reputation in, pub, in, in, in like, in, at risk. But yet she's been doing this for 11 years without getting caught. So really, his white knighting in the final hour is kind of a bit whorish. Well, here's the thing. I know I said before I get annoyed with people criticizing these books because they are Regency era books and like what would you expect? But I feel like there's a line like And he has crossed it. Yeah. He has danced over it. He did a sachet. He did the whip and he got onto the other side. He was like, cross the line, who whip? Like people say that Benedict gives them the icks because he keeps asking Sophie to be his mistress, and I'm like, No, 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 no. In the context of the time He can't marry her. Like, he literally can't. Like, we were saying before about Regency era society. Like, if she was actually of the servant class, he legit cannot fucking marry her. He has no other options. And yet, in that book, he was willing to do it anyway. Like, there's a certain way for you as an author to write a period drama and, like, include enough modern feminist elements that work with the context of the time like penelope giving way to colin's every fucking demand when they're not even married is bullshit to me 
Like, it's not the same that thing as bullshit. Benedict feeling trapped and having to ask Sophie to be his mistress. Like, it's not the same. No. Like, he has literally no right to be telling her, you cannot be Lady Whistledown anymore. Because that's basically what he says. Which is why what happens in the carriage after this makes it so much worse. It's so gross because he's literally like, you can't be Lady Whistledown anymore. You will not post this letter. You will not do this. You will not do that. And I'm like, you literally aren't even her fucking husband. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, it gives me such the fucking ick. And then, like, her carriage had left by the time that they left the church together. Like I said, she couldn't deliver the letter to the pew master. And Colin's like, no, you come in my carriage. You're safe with me, baby girl. And she's like, yes, come in. And she gets in willingly. They argue about the subject, the theme of tenacity and identity in both. Like, she is, like, resilient to let Cressida take her identity but not her true identity because she doesn't want people to know but she also doesn't want people to not know that it's not her it's like it's all backwards but thing also and don't eventually forget. they fuck but don't forget wait wait they don't fuck yet but Almost. don't forget this don't forget this because this is really fucking important because i feel like people are gonna give me shit on this but seriously colin also doesn't want penelope to be lady whistledown because he's fucking jealous we haven't gone there yet he says it yeah. he's it's in the narrative he sorry. is jealous of her that's so fucked. You can kind of tell from their argument that, like, he's, like, yeah, like you're saying, he's, like, it's not spoken out right until later where it, like, becomes, like, the internal n- yeah. narrative. But, like, how he's talking to her, he's, like, he wants her to stop because she has this tenacity that he just never could muster. Like, all he could do is write about the ponds of Greece, and he doesn't even believe in himself enough to let someone who he's known for years to look at it. Right. And he's just, like fucking floor that this person was able to do something behind his back for 11 years and make total bang become a hashtag gatekeep girl boss girl slay but like you know what it is that bothers me it's like i can accept the sexism of the time period for the Mm-mm. sake of the story the thing that bothers me is that in all the other books we have societal sexism that i just sort of brush off to enjoy period dramas but this is just but like sexism. but this is just personal like with antony and kate antony never dims kate's like snarkiness like she talks to him however she fucking wants to talk to him like does he expect her to still be like a wife and a viscountess yes like she's not going to go off and have her own goddamn career because this is limits. a period drama but she he never says to her like you will never speak like he's not you know what i'm saying like he understands her personality and he lets her have that personality and it's not like like benedict even kate though he is, kate is smart she knows her, her like I, I hate saying this but she knows her place she knows what roles are expected penelope is smart she knows what roles are expected she was following them for 11 years and not getting caught like you're talking to her like she's a child yeah you're it's really her, insulting the, like it's 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 so hard to even equate them because as you're saying this like it, even if he's like oh, okay like it's not like he's telling he's not serious he's not like if you don't shut the fuck up i'm gonna hit you like he's like well, he does yeah. a joke where he's like oh ha 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 and like look antony has his flaws but i just use that as an example because i know julia is capable of like writing couples that are good for each other like sophie is a more um i guess not submissive but she's a, a docile character for a docile male right so it makes sense Ew, i hated that i a hate docile male <laughs> <laughs> what are we in the omegaverse but i just mean she's not over here trying to like be a girl boss she's just like she's she wants the girl romance that she is. yeah right and like but i'm saying like if you get to later books which we'll get to eventually the seventh book with gareth and hyacinth she's capable of writing males who even though they're products of their time and still expect certainty like certain things from women like are okay with with the women's personality i'm just and what they're doing like gareth never tells hyacinth she can't be herself no once they're together like maybe before he's like this is weird but then once they're like actually together he accepts all of those things about her like colin does nothing but give penelope shit mind you they're for doing what she's doing technically courting at this point yeah it's annoying as fuck like it's not necessarily the restrictions of society that bothers me because i did sign up for a period piece she's the girl of his dreams yet he he goes to such efforts in this carriage ride to say that the girl that's right in front of her that he's been slowly starting to feel the real feelings for is just too much for him right like i just don't believe for one second that if hyacinth for example or even eloise and i fucking hate philip but even eloise like especially but hyacinth is my best example like i don't believe for one second that if hyacinth actually turned out to be lady whistledown or something that gareth would tell her to not do it no he would be concerned for her but he would never say like i'm gonna be mad at you if you don't stop now because all that Colin wants is the 
the nice girl who liked him for years and now she's got a rocking body to have a hot and sexy carriage scene in which is what they do now yeah sorry they're so sorry angry that was other. such a hard segue but no, i'm just really mad it's, it's fine i'm just trying to carefully mm-hmm. and tastefully segue back in go ahead i'm sorry Ron. no you're fine you're allowed to this is this is why we get drunk and do this <laughs> i'm if so I mad wanted a sober conversation with you i wouldn't have it <laughs> Then I know something would be wrong. I just mean that unlike other Julia Quinn couples, they don't feel well matched. Yeah. It feels like she has an infatuation with someone who never existed. And he has an infatuation with her bedissiosi, which is what he (laughs) focuses on heavily in this little carriage scene. Yeah. And when they are finally done getting hot and heavy as they trotten down the beaten path, if you know what I mean... (laughs) He says, so are you going to marry me now or not? And she's like, how romantic. Yeah, super romantic. Good job, Colin. And so uh, the road to love is never smooth. It's so boring, too. Like, holy shit. Of all the Bridgerton books and the proposals, this one's the most goddamn boring and stupid. Yeah. Like, in The Duke and I, it's a forced marriage, fine, scandalous, entertaining. In the second book... It's forced marriage, but it's funny and entertaining because of the whole bee thing. Sucking on a teat because of the whole bee thing. The third book is dramatic all around because it's Cinderella. So like, there's all this shit going on, and he saves her. Oh my god, Lou said really. (laughs) Did we not tell you about that? Sucking on the teat, and he was like, "Really? We got to tell him about that." He didn't listen to our podcast, obviously, because he doesn't. Shame on him. Yeah, we'll tell you. We'll explain. Give us a second. There's there's tit sucking. Yeah, there's tit sucking. There's some venom. Okay, it's not what it sounds it like. All right? It's a pretty shady, <laughs> kinky shit. He's laughing really hard. It's not okay. Don't listen to Ronnie. It's not what it sounds like. But I just mean like the third book is Cinderella's dramatic all around, and he never actually proposes and to this, her, but he saves her from a jail cell. And it's this like is implied. a guide to sexism. This is a guide to how to be a sexist, misogynistic asshole. Pretty much. But like, this and is the most boring proposal of all of them. And it's the most like, uh, like you just freaking f- ridiculous engagement because literally it's just like, like Portia saying like, oh my gosh, how could he want you and not the infinitely more attractive Felicity? Yeah, she like, okay, this is such a romance novel thing. So I didn't have as much problem with it. Be- but like for s- solid five fucking minutes, Portia Featherington thinks that he's proposing to Felicity. <laughs> <laughs> no which, you have that's not your young no which is really sad and i was waiting for penelope to stand up for herself in this scene because like i said i really Colin wanted is talking to portia right i really wanted penelope's growth in this book to be after 10 years that she finally grew a fucking spine she didn't nope she didn't she's just sitting there and it's colin and he's like i'm marrying penelope and i really wanted so bad for penelope to stand up and be like He's marrying me. Because he almost fucked me in his carriage. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. But um, that would have been funny. But like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I was so disappointed because Penelope is just as pathetic as she was 10 years ago. Except now she's thin. Except now she's thin and pathetic. Like, holy fucking well, she's shit. She's an entirely different person. It's so sad. She's not a ton. She's a pound. Like, this book's... I'm seeing all the points in this book where it could have been so... I'm fucking ignoring you. <laughs> well, not... But, like, there's so many points in this book where if she just changed something slightly, like, I feel like it could have been so good. The message would have been better. I'm just... I keep fucking can't. And so, yeah, he's, like, he just wants to seek he's passion. He's arrogant douche about and it. And friendship and intellectual conversation, yet he tampers her down. A good laugh on occasion. He doesn't even seem that excited about marrying her. He's just like, he, I'm going to do it because I he almost questions fucked like, her. He, he questions. He's like, I want all these things in a marriage, but is that love? Fucking asshole. You better know that before you walk her down the aisle, wet her better and have her kids. Yeah, for real, bro. Jerk. And then so he's still like, even though he's in the midst of doubts, he's like, ah, we're still going to continue with this because it's not like her reputation or life is up. Like, ah. And so um, <laughs> he's like, do I, I mean, feel- at least Anthony did the right thing. But he's having like this whole moral conflict. He's like, do I feel things for her? Do I not feel things for her? And it makes me mad reading this because I do remember this. And like Penelope is like now aware that he's not a perfect man. Bitch. Should have walked away, girl. Penelope, you kind of aren't the best, but you deserve way better than the worst. Here's the thing, though. I think Penelope's character in the book is better in, than in the show. She I think she's a nicer have a person. Spine. She's shown no growth. She, yeah, right. She's a nicer person. 
She's just a less interesting character. And I can't decide what I <laughs> prefer because I hate Penelope in the show. I think she's like almost irredeemable and I'm sorry, but like yeah. she's a fucking shit person in the show and I don't even like want her to be happy. But in the book, she's so bland and pathetic. And the one time she grows a spine, it's seen as a bad thing. Right. Because it's like in, in I just a- can't with Penelope. I don't get why people like her. I really don't. Is it because she's fat? Like, I don't understand. Like, they just want to like, they just want like fat representation. <laughs> Like, because you can have good characters and have fat representation, girl. Like, you don't have to settle for this characters. asshole. Do you know what it's, I mean? Yeah. Like, but fat like, people deserve more than this bitch. <laughs> like, for fucking real. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's no, true. No, 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 you're right. I just, I, you said it, so I don't know how to add to it. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out a, cl- a creative way to segue to the rest of this little section. Sorry, go ahead. I, I started to segue, and then you... It's like when gay continue. characters first came on the scene, and they were, like, really shitty characters. Hey, and like I'm a shitty person. <laughs> Stop. I just mean like how o- only now we're starting to get like complex, actually interesting don't gay you characters. Don't the name of Glee that has the best gay representation ever. Oh my god! Starting don't and even ending fucking with talk about performing Glee. single ladies at a football game. My point is like that we keep having this point where like people will stand characters just because they're like representations, and I feel like they deserve more. You deserve more out they of a character less. who's like fat representation. You don't deserve anything. You know. I don't know. But she's not even fat anymore in the book, so that doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. But go ahead. But when she finally grows a spine, it's at the Bridgerton family ball event. Mm-hmm. And it's when at this big ball and to announce their engagement, you know what happens? What? Someone comes around with the latest Lady Whistledown, which is the... Which she promised she Colin she wouldn't publish. But she still did. But she yeah, almost anyway. got dicked down and then she lied, which, which honestly, girl boss, girl slay. Again, and he gets so mad major problems there i'm like fuck you colin fuck you he's so angry he feels betrayed and like uh, he it's passed off as like oh my gosh you promised me like you said that you wouldn't risk your reputation but it's really like there's more stuff at 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 play and colin would never break off their engagement once it's been made public which it had but it's it's very difficult it just made me so goddamn mad because it's like again with other bridgerton men and like look every single book the guy who is the homme du jour exhibits some level of sexism but i don't believe for one second if like kate turned out to be lady whistledown that antony would have been like this upset he would have been like lol that's pretty funny (laughs) like yeah you know what i'm saying he would have been concerned for her figure it out like gareth same thing like like all a lot of the other men like i feel like would have been like oh have you seen my plans yeah like they would (laughs) have they would have been concerned about their wives or girlfriends or whatever's reputation but they wouldn't have been angry with her for being lady but the thing is next he realized that's literally the next section is when he's angry and fuming and like like actually like i hate this he finally comes to the conclusion that he's jealous yeah as we've been saying which is petty as fuck and i can't sympathize now between pages 275 and 277 of the book he finally realized that that he's not actually angrier but she has a bigger sense of life purpose and accomplishment than he has ever had and his aspiration is to be a writer because all the bridgerton babies have to have some sort of talent for anthony it's being a hoe (laughs) (laughs) it's being the pie count (laughs) for benedict it's strong stick figures (laughs) okay and hating byron for colin it has to be writing a coherent sentence and for gregory it's it's singing his ABCs because he's a child. I love Gregory though, low, low key. He's a anyway, child. I love but Gregory. anyway, he finally realizes that. But you know how that- fucking psychotic and and petty and shitty that sounds. That you were literally like your friend. This was even before they were like engaged, and then it makes it worse that they were engaged. It's like this is somebody you claim to her like life and care work. about, and that's when he realizes and that you're his life telling her nothing. you're forbidding her from doing something she cares about because you're jealous. Like how fucking petty and bullshit is that? That's guess, so unlikable and disgusting. The only thing that's good out of this little revelation of him realizing that he's an entire dickwad and a half, and he should literally go curl up in a hole and die one of these days. Is that he realizes that he loves her. Okay, don't fucking care. Great. <laughs> don't love that. Um, and then they fuck, don't they? Uh, the yeah, the pair seals their commitment to each other with a steamy night of love. 
They belong oh, together. Oh, hanky panky before marriage. Put it on the bingo board. Yeah, so what? We already ixnayed this game. Um, um, I'm still playing. Okay. So now that he realizes that the, the underlying root of his hesitation was actually... Oh, we also have one more hanky panky scene. Oh, Sorry. fuck you. Now oh. that he realizes that this underlying I don't know if I really love her thing is because he's actually jealous of her hashtag girl bossness leading her own empire of gossip, scandal, and intrigue... Oh my, like, <laughs> and he's like, okay, we can fuck, we can get married, they'll be married soon. And now, it's time for La Finale. How do you say that in French? What? La Finale. The finale? Oui. <laughs> what are you saying? Le finale? Le finale? I think no. it's finale in French, but we pronounce it finale because we're fucking American. Now it's time American. for La Finale. <laughs> I made her spit up. Okay, bitch. Keep going. Okay. Just keep going. Wedding bells We're are in the done. air. And the ton. The are, ton, the motherfucker. Tonner, <laughs> the ton are still gossiping a ton about who the fuck the real Lady Whistledown, Whistledown is. Whistledown. But with the dress fittings and shopping excursions, preparations, joy ceremony itself, the couple is having some fun first. There's a realization on Colin's part that if he wants to feel as comfortable in his own skin as he'd like, he needs to have the courage to pursue his writing passion so that way he's not eternally resentful and pissed yeah, keep being about a his travel incredibly influencer. successful author of a wife. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. His, his, balls. His, his literally his fucking solution is I need to outdo my wife to feel good about myself. Like, what the fuck? He's like, I need to feel accomplished that way to compare to you i feel even more like i'm sure all the other men in this universe probably feel the same way but it's not so over <laughs> like like take me and rory for example oh my god like stop. just because she's the english major i feel like i need to correct her whenever she's wrong like the difference between gossip and scandal i, I mean i do that you're because i hate over that. i'm not because i'm right you're wrong i'm right you're wrong <laughs> i'm right okay and this you're bitch an english couldn't add and you're eight. And you're an English major who fails. Okay, this bitch couldn't add eight to twenty-two today. I so <laughs> let's just put that out there. Eight to twenty-two. We were literally having a conversation about how my brother's thirty eight years bitch. younger than me, and you 30. literally were telling me it's thirty, bitch, that I was wrong. Eight to twenty-two is thirty. We never talked about thirty. We talked about twenty-one and eighteen. Is Fuck it twenty? <laughs> And this bitch is dyslexic. (laughs) Apparently I am. Yep. Anyway, moving along. This is what I have to deal with. I hope you guys fucking understand. This is everything. He's like, he's like, he's like Penelope. Oh my gosh. She's such an accomplished writer. Oh my gosh. You know how to write. I'm going to outdo you so I can feel good about myself. He's like, wait, I want to outdo you. So will will you be my editor? And she's like, of course, baby boy. (laughs) They get no, married, by not the to be confused with Benny Baby Boy. And Benny then Baby Boy, my Cressida, boo. we didn't forget about that bitch. Cressida, oh, yeah, she's still back. smart and cunning, and she never forgets an insult. She pieces together the clues because she's the only woman here with a brain, apparently, according to <laughs> yeah, really, <laughs> according to Julia Quinn. And she determines that Penelope and Lady Whistledown are one and the same. So she wants money, revenge, and just the upper hand at that point so she tries to blackmail penelope into giving her ten thousand pounds which was so fucking stupid which is 10 tons (laughs) (laughs) tons. you dumb fuck like no but please correct me if i'm wrong like this no this is honestly the but instead of getting a thousand dollars she's getting 10 no, not for the bunny. I'm saying, like, this scene was so stupid. Oh, yes. Because Penelope says, like, nobody will believe you. And Cressida is like, yes, but then when I get the rumor out there, like, people will remember, like, a conversation they had with you and it'll start to make sense to them. And I'm like, bitch, Lady Whistle, like, not Lady Whistle, not. Lady Danbury straight up said at, like, the Smite Smith used to call, like, in a joking way, lol, I think it's you. <laughs> and everybody fucking heard it and nobody believed it no one believed it so like they're like not that bitch and this yellow. is like not real stakes because nobody would fucking believe this and penelope is like oh no because she's smart in every other instance except for this and what's so she's stupid like, is what she's like m- m- my love my life my colin please what do i do but wait 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 going oh, back sorry. to this i'm sorry i can't I, i'm not over it like <laughs> i know you're not over what, it what going back to it the re- the thing that tips Cressida off and again I get this is a shitty romance novel so I'm sorry for being nitpicky but like I can get past a lot of things as long as it makes somewhat sense this doesn't this doesn't make 
any sense. Like, Cressida is like, oh, because Penelope said something like the phrase, like, it would break my heart. And in the Lady Whistledown, it's not Cressida Cooper, like, or uh, Cressida Toombley, like, article. She says it would break my heart to know that people think it's her. She's like, you guys say the same thing. I'm like, holy shit. Oh my God. Someone used an incredibly common phrase and you fucking thought. Well, slap me on the ass and call me Pappy. I think we found a winner. Like, that would be like, <laughs> that would be like fucking saying no shit Sherlock and someone writing a BuzzFeed article under a pseudonym that had the term no shit Sherlock in it. It's Rory. And you being like, it's Rory. Oh my God, it's me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? It's like when you point out something like, I relate to that. You'd be like, because I used a really it's common like that phrase of, the, of that person responding to an image of like a guy, a stick figure lying in bed and then kicking up his legs and then the the covers going underneath his legs. He's like, ha, 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 I, I do, do that. that. Like that's literally what that fucking was. It, it made is. no sense. And I was like, Penelope, fucking lie. And because, Just fucking lie. But the thing is, because she never learned how to grow a spine, and now that she's about to be married, she's like, like kinda, she's already married she's, by the time she gets blackmailed. She's married already. Her and Colin are married by this point. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Colin's all fucking pissy. Yeah. Fucking sorry. Colin. I fucking hate him. So, she, anyway, so since she's married, she now has nothing to herself, including her own spine. So- <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was good. <laughs> Thanks. And so she's like, Colin, baby boy, what do I do? And he comes with a plan to silence Cressida. And um, it's basically like, I'm a Bridgerton. Haha. <laughs> That's it. Yep. That's why being a Bridgerton's good, because you can reverse blackmail someone. Colin is proud of his new wife and wants the world to know. So he wants to tell society the truth himself. Which is also really shitty that he's forcing her to basically out herself, she, not in a gay way, but like... this. No, I was about to say, this is a metaphor for gay. It kind of is, because he's literally forcing her to out herself. At a ball, and he doesn't really in front tell her In front of everyone. He doesn't tell her. Like, she's at this ball, and he's like, yo, I'm going to tell everyone you <laughs> want to down. And she's like, okay... Um, honey, don't forget the oars. The yeah, boys. She, she's like, please don't do that. And he's like, and then so th- they're all there. Yay. I hate him. And then Lady ben- Danbury is like, oh, I'm so glad that we found out who Lady Whistledown was. Yeah, so was. he announces it. I, al- I always knew it was you, Penelope. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> Did you like my face after? Yeah, that was awesome. I wish you guys could have seen that. The veins were like popping out of her neck and but everything. But it made me sound like her, so. I always knew it was you penelope so now the final little snippets uh the following year 1825 and because he's a bridgerton she's knocked up oh um, yeah because they always all have kids uh so yeah there she's with child and uh, but trialed the child <laughs> and colin is also with the child metaphorically because he's about to publish his first literary baby so he's about to like publish a book so good yeah. for him i guess Fucking whatever good for him i guess and then more on the way and then penelope is writing a novel. they have like three kids don't they yeah penelope's writing a novel called the wallflower so side fuck, note fuck them i think it's <laughs> fuck them oh my god with this bullshit fucking side note okay so if, if she outsells him then he's going to literally throw a conniption and might kill her yeah like here's my issue with this book tell me so i want to get it out i want to preface this with saying no i get don't preface i spit it okay let me just fucking explain give me a second all right give me a second i'm a little drunk let me explain so i've said this before i alluded to it this whole time stop whispering about me about my back oh my god i said as she takes another you're like i'm a little i'm a little drunk (laughs) (laughs) yeah like i wonder why so here's the thing let me say i i alluded to this before but it does get me sometimes when people complain about like the lack of wokeness in these books i'm like if you don't really like societal um i guess restriction of women in a story then maybe you're just not into period dramas because that's kind of like par it's for an the inherently course part of the deal yeah like you can have stories about rebelling against the time but we're not doing like full-on postmodern feminism in any of these books it's just no. not how it goes you don't get your own but there's a account. level there's a level of autonomy you can give your female characters even in this context and he does not give it to her and he does not give it to her like holy shit he bugs the fuck out of me like other books 
I guess, and and I, Julia, people like Julia Cudney and other people on YouTube have pointed out that I guess whatever Bridgerton book you like or dislike is just going to cater to what you hate more about the sexism that's present. Like some people just really don't like Benedict's book because they can't stand the whole mistress thing. Personally, I understand but the I context and it didn't offend me. This offends me because he's dimming her light and there were female writers at this time. And I feel like another reason, uh, listeners, why that makes so much sense and especially in context with rory is that she has written her own books you can find them on amazon nigel oh my god stop please <laughs> with the icy staircase no i took that one off okay anyway she has written books and she has self-published them online so it makes sense to me why this would be the last book on her list because as someone who has gone through the effort of writing and spending countless hours and times developing characters, developing stories, developing everything, meticulously, carefully rewriting and writing and rewriting and writing, why a book about a man being jealous of his partner's like literary prowess is so offensive? It's because you are an author. So it makes sense why this is the most offensive thing that can be done in a book. Yeah, that's probably true. I, mean, I think that's definitely true. That's definitely true. But you know what it is too? It's because in the context of the period, like just as an example, so I know people are going to say like, oh, I'm being too like defensive of Benedict's book. No one's saying that. It's just, I'm just saying I know people are going to say it. I'm not saying it. Oh, shut the fuck up. Let me finish <laughs> my sorry. point. I'm sorry. I'm also drunk. <laughs> my point is like, I just I'm use it, all the time. I just use it as an example to make my point. I just use, I just use it as an example to make my point. So, in Benedict's book, it's fine if it's not your thing, if that really bothers you. My just my point is that, like, in that book, people's biggest complaint is that he's asking Sophie to be his mistress, and that's offensive and disrespectful to her. Yeah. Personally, given the context of the time, like I've said before, that would be a life-ruining thing. Mm -hmm. And what I like about his book is before he even finds out she's an Earl's bastard, he decides to ruin his life and go against society and be with her. After, like, that's his arc. Like, he starts off asking her to be his mistress and then makes the decision, like, fuck it, I'm going to marry her because I care about her. So before for me, personally, it doesn't bother me because to me it's an arc. It's not like an offensive, he never changes, he's disrespectful to her the whole time. And for me, I, I love anthony's book because i love falling in love with people i hate <laughs> <laughs> but i just mean like i understand if benedict's book for example gives you yeah. the x personally i don't understand i don't understand it like if it, it's fine like i'm not going to criticize That's you for not liking book. it it's not my favorite it's my second favorite but i just mean i just use it as an example because it's to me the best example i can think of of like what how i could see how someone would be offended and how i don't agree and like with this book, what if, what is so offensive to me is it's like Collins, Collins dimming of Penelope's light metaphorically is not necessarily socially acceptable. Like Mary Wollstonecraft wrote the Vindication of the Rights of Women in the nineteen in not in nineteen the 18, seventeen oh, sorry. the seventeen eighties seventeen nineties. Like women had careers in writing, and I get that it's supposed to be like a manifestation of Collins like concern for her it's like that romance novel bullshit of like i'm so concerned for your safety i just care about you so but, much but it doesn't come off that way especially it comes off when he so admits dickish. later no especially it doesn't come off of that anyway retrospectively when he admits that that wasn't the case at all when he says he was right. jealous of her so any like like leeway you could have given to him for the trashy romance trope of like being protective it's completely null and void when julia quinn admits that that's not actually the case it's actually the case of intense jealousy and i feel like people may argue that that's his arc which is fine whatever maybe they develop on it better in the tv show but here it was like a maybe 10 page little segue of oh shit i'm actually jealous but i do love you i've just been holding myself back from it I, yeah, and yeah that could be the arc that people are seeing like men becoming in tune with their prejudices and their inherent like need to guard because historically speaking from the other people has, or like speaking of people who might really enjoy this book colin is someone who guards himself he travels away when he doesn't want to do things he's a he's a right. fighter he doesn't stay and fight and the fact that he stayed and fought even though he didn't fight correctly 
fuck no, he didn't fight correctly. He was supposed to stay for a fortnight and he ended up staying longer because he had a courtship and engagement with Penelope. He stayed longer, fought. He fought horribly because that's not his nature. His nature is to leave when things get rough. His Mm -hmm. nature is to leave when he doesn't understand. And he didn't do that this time. And he had to stay and learn what the fuck his own prejudices were, which was that he leaves when he doesn't feel adequate and surrounded by two older brothers who are infinitely better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are. Though. But like, and a sister who's like a duchess now, like yeah, younger yeah, siblings, yeah. like Hi- like Francesca's already married, Hyacinth's doing her thing, Gregory, whatever. But like, people might find that his endearing arc, that he chose to stay longer than he needed to. He chose to be with Penelope. And then he found out then he addressed his own things. Like, people can relate to that, especially when they have, like, young loves. I understand what you're saying. Like, I really do. I get I get why other people might relate to it, personally. I don't agree. But I'm I, just saying that's probably what, like... It just doesn't... I can see how people would find that appealing. It's just too much of, like, this... And you know what? How it comes across? To me, anyway. The, just subliminally, I guess. Like, because it's not overt text. It's Dang, not like... Close. It's not like... <laughs> stop it's not like julia quinn i think explicitly says this or endorses this but it's very subliminal it's like a weird coincidence that at the time penelope gives up her pen as lady whistledown and in the end of the third book the epilogue is like basically like she's like i'm gonna do my i'm gonna live my own life instead of writing about other people's good for her she grew a spine which would be but she just goes about it the wrong way and the way it comes across in the book is like that she's giving up her career to be colin's wife like and i like i said it's not explicit it just feels very subliminal like she's giving up metaphorically she's she's publishing her own book all this stuff to be colin's wife but she's publishing her own book right but it's not the same it's not the same like career it's because it's not offending colin that she can write this book but because lady whistledown is a concern for him she has to stop doing it like like it's just it, it gives me the icks it like just doesn't feel right to I me. i didn't quite get those vibes at the end it just doesn't feel right to me that's just I got how it, it more feels so to me that they had this perpetually talked about concept of identity and unmasking and finally at the end Penelope was able to find her voice when she's not shielded by a pseudonym. But she doesn't, though. That's because the problem. I think I, I disagree I, because I think that the fact that she's now able to write under her own name, even if it is as she is happened to be married to a Bridgerton, she's still writing with her name. She's writing Penelope better. Bridgerton. Okay. She's writing Penelope Bridgerton. So I still think everyone knows that's her. I, I understand what you mean. My only issue is I would agree with you if it was her choice to unmask herself. Because it wasn't her choice. She did not want to unmask herself. She didn't grow a spine. Colin basically forced her True. to do it. So I would 100% agree with you. If it weren't for the fact if that it he literally, was an asshole. If it weren't for the fact that he made her fucking out herself. I, like if yeah. it was her decision and she said, fuck it. I don't want to be blackmailed anymore. I'm going to make, I'm going to let everybody know I'm Lady Whistledown. Then I would 100% agree with you. I agree, but I disagree with your previous point that she's just resigned herself to be his wife. Because if she just wanted to be his wife, he's rich. She has money now. A lot of it. She could have not published anything. She's still That's choosing fair. to write. That's fair. The only reason she I, is I get now a-, an, a human incubator and an author. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I get, like, I think annoyed about it is just because I get this vibe it's like that she's doing it in a context that makes colin comfortable which is where i hope they expand on further in In the the show show. (laughs) hi guys it's editing rory here and we recorded this a really long time ago because we just record things when we can for different series at different times we put a lot of things in the backlog Um, and we had a whole segment at the end of this episode that was about our thoughts on the show before it even came out. So they're very, very dated views. Um, 
and keep an eye out if you're interested on our thoughts on season three of the show and how excited we are for season four of the show. Um, keep an eye out for that because we are going to release a whole midpoint podcast um, episode just on our thoughts as the Bridger- on the Bridgerton show as a whole. Um, so if you are interested um, in our thoughts on the show, then check that out before season four comes out. Hopefully we can get that out. But otherwise, um, we're still going to just be talking about the books generally in these episodes. Um, so, yeah, sorry about that. And <laughs> chin cut, which is, yeah, yeah, because my, my hairstyle changed. So if you were going to make like fan art of me based on my profile picture, fuck you, because my hair color <laughs> changed and my hairstyle changed. So like, <laughs> I'm just keeping you all in the dark. Is my name really Ronnie? No, it's okay. not. What is my name? I don't fucking know. We don't know. What is the point of this podcast? We don't know. But this is been, how we end a podcast. But we've been dragging out this exit, so <laughs> I think we're going to go now. So yeah, this was Rory and Ronnie. And, and thank you for being here for Sinful, Sinful Sunday. Yep. Follow us on www.stoptheclolyellow.com. Boom. <laughs> Bye, losers. Bye. <laughs>
Hi guys, it's Editing Rory here, and we recorded this a really long time ago because we just record things when we can for different series at different times. We put a lot of things in the backlog, um, and we had a whole segment at the end of this episode that was about our thoughts on the show before it even came out, so they're very, very dated views. Um, and keep an eye out if you're interested on our thoughts on season three of the show and how excited we are for season four of the show. Um, keep an eye out for that because we are going to release a whole midpoint podcast, um, episode just on our thoughts as the Bridger on the Bridgerton show as a whole. Um, so if you are interested um, in our thoughts on the show, then check that out before season four comes out. Hopefully we can get that out. But otherwise, um, we're still going to just be talking about the books generally in these episodes. Um, so yeah, sorry about that.